Chag Sameach, everyone. Yesterday, it was announced that the Nobel Prize Award for Medicine was given to two scientists. One of them is a Jewish doctor by the name of Dr. Alter, Harvey Alter. He was born in New York, and he was given the Nobel Prize for discovering the cure for hepatitis C, which affects the liver and affects 70 million people worldwide and approximately 400,000 people a year die from hepatitis C. And he was able to discover uh, a way to detect this virus early on, which basically will, they hope, by the year 2030, completely eliminate hepatitis C, which again affects 70 million people and 400,000 people a year die from. And the award which was presented yesterday said that he and his partner uh, are credited for saving, to date, millions of lives. Imagine the feeling of knowing that your cure, and especially in a time of COVID when we're dealing with viruses, and here we see that their research led to the saving of millions of lives and will potentially eliminate hepatitis C, eradicate it from the face of the earth. This is very much connected to the holiday of Sukkot. We know that there are three major festivals. There is Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Pesach commemorates the divine miracle of the 10 plagues, the splitting of the sea, and the rescue, and the deliverance, and the saving of the Jewish people, their redemption from Egyptian persecution, a super miraculous event. Shavuot represents and commemorates the giving of the Torah when God came down to earth and came down to Mount Sinai and spoke the Ten Commandments and gave the Jewish people and the world his Torah. Again, a divine, supernatural occurrence. But what does the holiday of Sukkot commemorate? And here we find a dispute in the Talmud. One opinion, Rabbi Eliezer says, it represents the divine clouds of glory that protected the Jewish people in the desert over their 40-year journey in the desert, which clearly would be a miraculous event. However, there's a second opinion in the Talmud, and that is the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. The famous sage Rabbi Akiva says, no, it wasn't the divine clouds of glory that protected the Jews that we commemorate by eating in the sukkah for seven days, but it was the actual huts, the sukkot, that the Jewish people built to shelter themselves, to be able to forge through their 40-year journey and survive in the vast wilderness until they arrived at the Promised Land. And the question is, if all the holidays represent miracles, what's the miracle in the fact that the Jews built huts? Bedouins in Israel also build huts to survive. And Furthermore, why would this holiday, according to Rabbi Kiva, be the ultimate joy, the time of our rejoicing, if the other two holidays represent divine miracles, and this is a natural occurrence that the Jews built huts? And perhaps one answer answers the second. There are two types of miracles. There are miracles that are made by God, but then there are man-made miracles. When human beings, like the Jews in the desert, persevere on their long journey, for 40 years going from Egypt to Israel and they overcome all the obstacles and the challenges and the environmental uh, effects of traveling in a desert and they shield and protect themselves and with courage and faith they forge ahead and reach their destiny, the promised land, that becomes a miracle that was obviously divinely inspired and facilitated but it was created through human effort and determination and we know in life that the greatest joy comes not when something is given to you as a gift although it's easier that way but when you achieve it through your own effort dr harvey alter said that his alarm his phone rang at 4 45 this morning and he ignored the phone call the first two times but then finally he picked up the phone annoyed who's calling him at 4 45 and it turned out that at the age of 85 this was the most joyous phone call he ever got because after working on this project for 40 years approximately, he started in the 70s, which is similar to the journey of the Jews of 40 years. He finally reached his destiny, the promised land, where now it was recognized that he saved millions of lives and God willing one day will completely eradicate the horrible hepatitis C, which affects the liver and many, many people tragically succumb to it. What a joy, what a pleasure knowing that through the miracles that God created in human nature, the ability to find drugs and cures in the world, he was able to draw it out and create something which will save so many lives and has already saved millions of lives forever. 
And that is the message of Sukkot, that God wants to partner with us in this world. He doesn't want us to just be the recipients of His goodness and kindness. He wants us to participate with Him. And when we do that, we achieve the ultimate Zman Simchatenu, the time of our rejoicing. There's a TED talk I watched from Tel Aviv, Israel, from a general in Israel. His name is General Daron Almog. And General Daron Almog tells the story how he was a great warrior. He fought in the Yom Kippur War. He was one of the first generals that landed on the runway of Entebbe. He helped bring the Munich terrorists who killed the Munich athletes in Germany to justice. And in the 80s, he was flying over to Ethiopia to rescue Ethiopian Jews on a mission to bring them to Israel. And he said not long before that, he and his wife had their second child, Iran. And their second child, Iran, tragically, at the age of eight months, was diagnosed to have very, very severe autism and retardation. And the doctors told him and his wife that your child will most probably never speak for the rest of his life. And he said he and his wife were very, very torn and distraught. How could they go on with their lives? They were young couples, their second child, they were just building their family. And now they find that their eight month old child will never talk, will never have a future, will never develop, will never even look them in the eye. And many family and friends were saying, you should put your son into an institution. You cannot live your life with him. And as he was flying back on this flight from Ethiopia, he was deep in thought. As everyone on the plane was hugging and kissing and singing and dancing, going to Israel, he was lost in thoughts with the heavy burden of deciding, should he keep his son at home or put him into an institution? And suddenly he heard an inner voice speaking to him. And it was the voice of his son, Iran. And his son said to him, Abba, father, you're willing to travel thousands of miles to rescue people who are trapped in Ethiopia, people who are uh, strangers to you, but you won't rescue me. I am trapped. I am a prisoner. I am a hostage in my own body. Won't you save me? I'm living in your own house. And suddenly he realized that that was the truth and he had a clarity that he didn't have. And he said he rose up and started dancing together with the Ethiopian uh, p passengers who were coming to Israel, but he says he was dancing because he found the answer he was looking for. That indeed, if he was willing to travel to the end of the world to save others, he has to rescue his own son and not allow him to be a victim twice. Firstly, from severe autism and retardation, and now to be abandoned and put into an institution. He came home and shared that with his wife. He devoted his life to helping his son develop to the best of his ability. And in the TED talk, he shows videos of him hugging and kissing his son and laughing and playing ball with his son. And he retired early from the army and he founded a 25 acre uh, uh, compound camp uh, site in the Negev called Alain Negev. And this is a, a residential place for children and adults with severe autism and he has helped thousands and thousands of children and turned the tide of stigmatization of children with autism to embracing them and loving them as normal healthy children to the best of their ability helping them bring out their unique qualities of their beautiful inner souls and letting them feel the same love and respect in society as every other child and he concludes his TED talk by saying, and he won the, the Israel Prize, the highest award in Israel for his work for children with autism and this 25 acre facility that he built for families and children with autism in the Negev. And he concludes his TED talk by saying, I've gone through the army and I'm always used to having control over everything in my life as a general. And suddenly I felt like I had no control and I had to learn how to live life anew with that vulnerability. And he said, I've had many great uh, teachers in university, professors, generals who have trained me my whole life. But my greatest teacher, my greatest professor was my son, Iron. He taught me the most about life. And so Zman Simchatenu, the holiday of Sukkot teaches us is that when we dig deep within ourselves and we discover the supernatural uh, miracles in our lives by creating supernatural events by forging forth with courage, faith, and determination, when we go beyond what we think we were ever capable of doing, when we achieve something positive for the lives of others and we become a blessing in the lives of others, then we achieve the true joy of Zman Simchatenu, like the Jews who forged ahead for 40 years in the desert 
built huts, protected their families, loved their families, arrived in the promised land and, in, and bequeathed it to the Jewish nation until this very day, we could still eat the fruit of their labor, of their sacrifice. That is the goal, that is the ultimate joy of our lives. Chag Sameach.